So a little bit of history behind my heritage. My father was a workaholic. He could work 18 hours a day, seven days a week. If something needed to get done, Daryl Horminger got it done. And that's my heritage. So I've taken it a step further where I am even more aggressive than my dad. And when I have a purpose and I need to make something happen, I can make it happen. And with this fire that I keep talking about, I have left my farm. Look at the weeds. I have 15 acres of eight foot weeds. This is my driveway right here. It's amazing. I have never, I have never, since 1970 when we moved here, I have never seen so voracious growth of weeds in the whole entire history. For some reason, this year, and I think it's this weather event that happens at night, where it's the dead of August, the dead of, of uh, July, and we have cold, cold nights. Even at Bragg Creek, we had cold nights. And what that does is in the morning, you have a, a dew, and the dew is what feeds those, that grass and those weeds. And then it gets hot during the day and they grow. So this is a weather event that nobody even sees or it's not that obvious, but yet is having a very big impact on the amount of growth of our fine fuels. This is totally, absolutely amazing. Look at my goats. My goats got lost in the weeds. My mother hasn't seen the goats for five days. And there they are, fat and lost in these weeds. But just to give you an idea of how crazy it is, here's the fence. Here's our gate right here. Like. I have never, ever, ever. Look at this weed right here, for example. How tall is that weed right there? So I'm six feet, okay? So that's right to here. So six feet, so you're looking at two and a half, we're looking at an eight and a half foot weed. Who has eight and a half foot weeds? There's weeds that are even taller than this one. So, when I talk about these fine fuels up at Bragg Creek and how the grasses have grown so much and they were, they were enormous last year and the year before, that fire travels by the fine fuels from forest to forest. And this puts us at an extra risk of a big, big, big event because you just don't have one forest. You have multiple forests that this, this fire can travel now to, which will inflame this fire so much that when it hits that head of the dragon that I call Cthulhu between Bragg Creek and Calgary, the, the wrath that this fire will cause is so big and so enormous that nobody's ever seen anything like this before. And when it comes to fire, I'm an expert. I don't have the, the book work and I don't have all the schooling and I don't have this, but I've been lighting fires and been around fires since I was five, six years old. And as I progressed in life, I, I got more into it. And then 94 hit and then I found out about our forests and what we're supposed to be doing in our forests. And clear cut logging is not one of them. We are not doing the right things in our force. And that price, that price will be paid. And I'm not saying it's gonna happen this year, but I am saying that it's probably gonna happen this year according to what I see. And if we can get to our first snow, we can get to winter, we're styling. But if we don't get to winter and this event happens, 
we're all going to be displaced and homeless. And then when October and November and December hit, and we have a big uh, cold snap, what are we going to do? Like, it's not just this disaster. It's the secondary and third, the third that disasters that are going to affect everybody's lives. Even the people that aren't affected right now will be affected by the people that are affected. So this is just a humongous thing. We need to do something now. And what we need to do is we need to, to thin and deadwood the cowboy trail on 200 meters on both sides from Bragg Creek all the way to Cochrane. As we get to Cochrane, we open it up wider and wider and wider because Spray Lake Sawmill has an enormous inventory of logs and finished lumber. And if that goes up because fire comes in from the Bow Valley Parkway, and Howard even said, while well, we have pumps and we have irrigation systems, what happens if the Bow Valley or the Bow River evaporated because of the fires coming down the Bow Valley Parkway that ended up evaporating the river or reducing its flow to such a point where there, you can't just draw water out of it? Now his plan for prevention, his plan for defense is now flawed. So these are things that people don't think of because they are, they are guided by greed. They are guided by money and wealth. And that's not how our force should be dealt with. Our force should be dealt with from a tree to tree basis by the health of a forest. And we should be able to look at a forest and say, hey, this forest, everything's raised up, it's cleaned up. There was a fire 10 or 15 years ago or there was a fire last year that mopped up the forest floor and all the good trees lived. Those are the happy stories. Not, oh, well, it was decimated by catastrophic clear-cut logging. <coughs> catastrophic clear-cut logging is decimated by that or is decimated by fire and those forests are lost. So we can't even talk about forest health because there isn't even a forest there. I just, I just have a hard time believing that people just aren't in tune with this at all. But as I see the responses on some of my videos and you know, I put some money and boost in the ads and I try to, or boosting my videos and I try to get the message out, nobody's ever phoned me and said, hey Wade, you really think this is true? Hey Wade, you really think this? Or hey Wade, and pick my brain to see, because it's their lives. It's, it's their homes. It's the stuff they spent the last 20, 30, 40 years trying to pay for. And now it's all at risk because the government and big corporations didn't do their due diligence to our forests. They're so busy stealing and tearing these places, these eco-sensitive places apart that they're not even thinking about their own selves. They're so drunk with power and drunk with greed. It's unbelievable and right now lumber is twice as much as it was three years ago. So there should be money allotted for some of this stuff to take place. Meanwhile, there's nothing. There's absolutely nothing. We need to change that because as we're rolling into the beginning of August, if we have a hot dry fall and we have a stupid camper or a quad that throws a spark or dry lightning strikes that go across the eastern slopes, and we have a kicker wind, when the fire department or the fire firefighters show up, it's gonna be far too late. And right now, all of our resources in firefighting have been stretched out to their very limits because of the amount of fires that we have out there. So if this happens, and we have a wind, they say that wildfire travels twice as fast as you can run. So imagine that when you look at the, the head of the dragon. Go to Google Earth, look at the head of the dragon between Bragg Creek and Calgary. Just look at it. I call him Cthulhu. And the tail of the dragon is Lake Louise, the, the lake. So here we have this vast area of old growth forest that hasn't been burned for over 100 years. It's been ready for 30 years already. We just got lucky. But that luck is starting to run out, people. So we need to pay attention to what Wade Horniger is doing 
and follow my lead because I know what to do. I know how to do it. I don't care if it's 30 guys or 50 or 500 or 5,000. There is enough vastness out there right now where I can put everybody to work. And when I do value added on those logs that we harvest, there's money to pay everybody for everything everybody did during this, this, this major preventive maintenance event that we need to do just to stop this from happening. When fire starts. You call the fire, the fire, the fire guy, the firefighters in, they're just gonna be doing mop up. They're just gonna be doing disaster relief. And all you guys are gonna end up in hockey arenas and community halls all over Southern Alberta. And is that what you want? Is a phone call saying, yeah, you got 20 minutes to get out of your house. I don't think so. Anyways, sorry for the doom and gloom, but this could be a happy story if we did the right things. So you guys have a good one and pay attention. So I got FireGuard on Facebook and I have uh, Tree V on YouTube. I'm wearing a cowboy hat and an orange shirt. Hit videos, check my crap out and then join and then see what you can do. I'm in Bragg Creek, so I'm available. I'm at the Cowboy Roast House and we're opening this weekend. So I have a magnificent brisket meal coming up. I have bison brisket, I have beef brisket, and I think, I think pork is gonna be back on the menu. Thank you.